come back against Army from 12 down with three minutes to go. They're just, a, they play very aggressive. They're not going to go away. Um, so we knew, you know, even at halftime, I said, you know, we're, they kind of have us right where they want us uh, with us having the lead because they are great at coming back and driving the ball. They got to the foul line. Uh, but, you know, our first half was, uh, you know, very good. Mm. We shot the ball extremely well. Uh, and we did what we needed to do in the second half, you know, to, to close out the game. And, uh, you know, Jim Engels has done a great job with that program. And, uh, you know, obviously last year we played them. We, we lost by 20 up there. Uh, they have a lot of the same guys, and we were ready for this game. Mm -hmm, no doubt about it. Tony Johnson had a marvelous contest and, and really was the, the turning point in that first half, as John and I were talking about a little bit. Uh, Johnson, with 11 straight points, including three threes, really opened up uh, the gates a little bit here. When it was 23-22 in Lafayette's favor, he turned it around and, uh, and made it quite a contest. Yeah, well, he, uh, you know, they had no one to really contain uh, Tony. He's very good at getting in gaps, and uh, he took advantage of that today, and that, that was a big part of our, uh, our, our game today, that he was able to get to the basket and create for us. Fantastic. We take a look now. The last non-conference game coming up, it'll be at Penn. Um, Without Dunphy there, what are we to expect? <laughs> well, we have his protege, uh, Coach Allen, uh, Jerome <laughs> Allen, who I also coach. Uh, loved Jerome. He was a terrific player, and he's doing a terrific job down there and running a lot of the same uh, Fran Dunphy uh, mm. uh, system that he learned under uh, Coach Dunphy. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a terrific young coach. And, uh, you know, for us, we, we have not fared too well to Pelestia, so it's a, it's a tremendous challenge for us. And, of course, uh, that game coming up in Philadelphia, 7.30 game time on the 8th of January. Coach, congratulations on a great win here at versus NJIT. A uh, complete can. performance and, and a, a good slamming of the door, too, to make sure that this team that's so feisty and can come back to, to haunt you did yeah. not jump back it into was, this contest. It was a good win for us, and I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, and hopefully we can continue this streak in the new year. Sounds great. That's Fran O'Hanlon, head coach of the Lafayette Leopards, in his uh, 18th season at the helm. 244 wins, now make it 245. Uh, Three-time Patriot League Coach of the Year as well. We're going to get a chance to talk to uh, one of the All-Patriot League preseason team members, Tony Johnson, our Coca-Cola player of the game. And, uh, Tony, congratulations on a great all-around effort by you and your teammates. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take us back to about halfway through that first half. You guys were shooting the lights out, but yep. then every time you'd score, they would score. And the score was rather close, 23-22, uh, when all of a sudden you kind of took things into your own hands as you saw some seams in the defense. Yeah, I mean, uh, the coaching staff just has been telling me to be a lot more aggressive as late. And uh, I just looked to pick my spots, and uh, luckily I, I got open. And uh, the more aggressive I am, I think it helps out the whole team because they have to, uh, to help against me, and it makes it everybody else's life easier. Well, a fantastic uh, run here of 11 Tony Johnson points in a row, including three threes, really opened it up as we were talking to your head coach, Fran O'Hanlon, from 23-22 uh, uh, to 36-26 uh, in that run of yours. And then Joey Tosinski started to feel it, and Henricks started lighting up. So I think you're right. Uh, you provided the spark that kind of lit the entire team. Well, yeah, like I said, I just try to be aggressive. Um, I mean, shots are falling. And then, of course, I mean, when we shoot well, we can play with anybody. And then, uh, like you said, they kept scoring whenever we scored. And I didn't even realize we were up by 15 and a half just because it seemed like it was so back and forth. But uh, I think that run really helped us going into the half. And as you can see, we, we needed it, especially the way they pressured us in the second half. Your marks for the first half stellar, 6 for 6 from the, from the field, 3 of 3 from the three-point line, 15 points to lead your team into the locker room, and everybody kicking in with steals mm -hmm. there in the first half. No turnovers in the first half. A credit to you, Tosinski, and the rest of the backcourt. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When we're shooting well, we, uh, we tend to be a lot more confident, and, uh, I mean, that's the biggest problem we've had as of late is turning the ball over, and when we don't turn it over, then we're fine. You're about a week and a half out before the Patriot League season starts. You'll be hosting uh, Navy here with Penn yet to go before mm -hmm. the league season starts. How do you feel Lafayette is at this point in the season, say, compared to last season? Um, I mean, we've had a much tougher schedule in the out-of-conference play. So, I mean, I think those have definitely helped us um, as of late. We uh, need to get a, a road win here at Penn because we need to learn how to win on the road, especially in, in Patriot League because, as we all know, it only gets tougher from here. 
All right, that's Tony Johnson, one of the two senior captains, along with Levi Geese, our Coca-Cola player of the game. Congratulations. Thank you very much. On a great outing Thank tonight, you. and good luck against Penn and Navy. Thank you very much. In that Patriot League opener. 83-66, the final here tonight. Lafayette kicking it on all cylinders. 6-10 and ten is the slate now, heading into that final non-conference game against Penn, John Leone. And, uh, boy, there were no real letdowns tonight. I mean, it was just 100% firepower all the way. Yeah, really, I think when uh, when Coach O'Hanlon really breaks down the film and takes a look at this thing, as I think he's going to be pleased across the board with the efficiency, how well uh, uh, they played. Uh, they took care of the basketball. The shot selection was great. The mm. movement, the spacing was terrific. And quite frankly, uh, they really forced NJIT uh, into a lot of difficult shots. We talked about their ability, to, uh, their inability to shoot the ball well, but a lot of that had to do with Lafayette's defense. They really, really played well tonight. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is a young team. We talked about it. They went through a difficult schedule early on. Uh, the last few games, Dan, they seem to have, uh, we, we, we've, we've seen the improvement that Fran O'Hanlon talked about early in the season. You know, this had a, a game, this was a game that could have really been a challenge for Lafayette. You had a homecoming for one of the starters for NJIT in Daquan Holiday. He started to show some glimmers of brilliance early in this contest. It's a tough one to try to keep in control and stay with a visiting team that has an emotional edge, perhaps, because of a homecoming from one of their starters. Well, not only that, Dan, but this is a team that is loaded with talent. I mean, mm -hmm. they're very quick. Uh, of course, you talk about Daquan Holiday, but, uh, you know, Flores and, and, uh, and Miller, these kids have, uh, have played a lot. When we talked about their non-conference schedule, they've played four Big East teams. They've lost by 8, 7, 6, and 10. Mm. So they've been in games with quality teams. And tonight Lafayette uh, really uh, uh, took it to them as effectively as any of those big-time teams have. Absolutely. A terrific performance by our player of the game, Tony Johnson. He finished 6 of 11, 3 of 4 from the three-point line uh, with a 15-point performance and, of course, lead, led the team in assists with seven couple of steals along the way. And we talked a little bit about how many Lafayette players had steals today in that lopsided turnover category. They really did, Dan. Uh, again, they were anticipating well and the, the balance between uh, offense and defense and, and uh, uh, just the, uh, uh, the diversity of their offense. Dan Trist was invisible early on. They started going to him in the second half when uh, uh, NJIT extended their defense to take away the three. Dan Trist uh, got into the act. So, uh, you know, uh, all good on all counts. And uh, now we go down to the Palestra where there's a little bit of a history there with the Leopards. But you know what? This could be, uh, you know, we've said it before. <laughs> You know, Penn is struggling a little bit, uh -huh. and uh, we're kind of going in different directions. It would be historic uh, to get a win over Penn at the Palestra. That would be a great way to lead into the Patriot League season a week from Saturday here against Navy, no doubt about it. So once again, uh, Lafayette dispatches New Jersey Institute of Technology 83-66 to and improves to 6-10 and on the season. Fifth straight win here at Kirby Sports Center. For John Leone, and Scott Morse and Matt Panto and our entire LSN crew. I'm Dan Mowdy. Thanks for joining us here on GoLeopards.com. Good night, everyone.